Hi, it's Closet Queen once again here on Brand TV. I'm here for another episode on Closet Tour. Today we are going to be talking about 10 ways on how to declutter your closet in an easy way. But before we go into that, let's have a short break. Okay, welcome back from that short break. Like I said, we are going to be talking about 10 ways on how to declutter your closet. Let's go straight to number one. Number one, take everything out of your closet. Put the entire content of your wardrobe on a bed or on the floor. Sort through and only keep what belongs to your closet. That means anything that you don't put on your body, including accessories, shoes, bags, jewelry, etc. Closets are often dumping grounds for those items that we don't know what to do with. So, now is the time to rehome your random stuff that doesn't belong to your closet. Rehome or get rid of those items right now. Number two, clean your closet drawers and shelves. Before you put your clothes back, clean everything thoroughly well. It's much easier when the cupboards and the drawers are empty and probably hasn't been cleaned for a while. Take a moment to start thinking about how you're going to organize your clothes when you put them back in. Although I think you should declutter first then organize, it might be helpful to have it in mind how you want to lay out your clothes afterwards. Do you have hangers? Do you need more storage boxes or drawer dividers? Well, you have also to think about that. Number three, have a quick sort through. Ramage through your piles and take out anything that you know you definitely don't want to keep. This might include items that you haven't worn for years, clothes that don't fit you, clothes that don't, you don't like, or those that are damaged beyond repair. All that you own, all that one that you bought for specific purposes and you don't want them anymore. For example, maternity clothes. Don't overthink things here. Just have a quick look through and take out any obvious item that you won't want anymore. Decluttering your home is more a little like peeling away the layers of an onion. Start with the first sweep to remove the obvious clutter. Then have another go to peel back another layer of clutter. Lease and repeat. Every time you go back to the de to declutter, you will have less clutter to sift through and it will become easier and easier. Number four, create three separate piles for unwanted items. By now, you might have some items that you don't want to keep. Create some space for three separate piles on your floor and number them number one to, to throw away, number two to donate, number three to recycle. Making the space now and being able to chuck clothes in the relevant piles as you go will make it easier just to focus on your decluttering and the piles won't get muddled up and undo your hard work. Decluttering is easier if you are prepared beforehand. Number five, sort your clothes in two different categories. To make it even easier for you to see what you've got, take a moment to sort through all your remaining clothes on your bed and put them into th rough categories. Don't be too perfectionist about decluttering here. Just use broad categories such as tops, bottoms, knitwear, underwears, etc. I think it is easier to sort your clothes now by category so you can begin to see how much of each type of item you've got. You can start to think about whether you really need 30 pairs of jeans or 10 evening dresses. Maybe you do or maybe you do not need. Number six. Pick a category and try every item on. Try every item on and don't be tempted to just hold it up in front of you. Actually, try it on for a minute, an hour or even the whole day and make a note of your reaction 
and how it makes you feel. Do you instantly feel good? Does it look good on you? Does it make you feel more confident, attractive and comfortable? If your reaction is half-hearted and it makes you feel like that, then consider getting rid of this item. You are aiming at only items that makes you feel fantastic, items that are in good condition and that are versatile to wear. And that's it. Everything else should go. Number seven, assess what you are keeping. Think about what clothes you need for how you live your life. Do you need more formal clothes for work or do you leave in casual clothes for working from home? Or running around after a toddler all day. Your range and quantity of clothes should reflect your lifestyle. It's not good having lots of skirts if you never wear them. Do you have items that are rarely versatile and can be used in lots of combinations? Think about keeping to particular color parrots or go for layers that you can use clothes in different seasons but just add or take away layers depending on the temperature. Number eight, put the clothes you're keeping back in the closet. Now it's time to put your clothes back in the closet or the drawers. Take some time to think about how you can arrange your clothes to make it easier to see everything at the first glance. As you do that, consider the following points. Hang as much as possible, only fold what will get damaged by hanging. Consider grouping your clothes by category, color, or season to make it look neater and easier to find things. Use drawer dividers or small boxes to organize underwears. Check out Pinterest and internet for inspiration on organizing and storing your clothes, shoes, accessories to save space and make it easier to find things. Number nine, deal with the unwanted piles now. And I mean now. This is a biggie. Don't just leave your decluttered unwanted clothes lying around as it will take up space. And do your hard work and you will be tempted to dig through it. Move the unwanted piles into bin bags or boxes and deal with them right now by taking them for recycling mm, to the charity or to a friend it is in. Last but not the least, number 10, shopping for new or replacement items. If you've decluttered your closet and have only kept back the ones that you really, really want to keep, you might find you need to buy one or two more pieces to repress or add to what you've kept. Shop according to your budget. Bear in mind that shopping intentionally can help you save some money or at least spend more wisely by ensuring you're buying things that you only really want or need. Many of us go get caught out with impulse buys when we see big red sale signs or we don't have a clear vision for what clothes we like to wear or would work well in our closet. And thank you so much for watching this episode. Don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell so that you're notified every day we upload a video. Please don't miss every Thursday at 8 p.m. It's Closet Queen Gift. Bye-bye.